Uh, welcome back guys and in a previous session we have discussed about taking screenshots and there were different three ways that we have discussed uh, to take a screenshot the first way we have discussed was using robot class second way we have discussed is take screenshot interface of selenium and the third way we have discussed is a short library okay so these were the three ways that we have studied so far to take the screenshot okay now if i talk about the automation now you guys are very comfortable pretty comfortable uh, of handling the entire web page okay so what are the different actions that we can perform on a web page okay uh, we can type something on the web page right we can type something we can click on something like buttons links okay so let us take example of any website let's say amazon okay so whatever elements are there first of all we have learned to uh, handle the browser browser window okay we were we studied to open the browser window we studied to launch the url inside browser window then we know how to refresh the page we know how to go back and navigate forward and navigate back and so on then we have talked about handling the web elements so whatever elements are visible inside the, this browser window we have uh, studied or discussed to handle those elements now what is meant by handling to performing certain actions on those elements okay so let's say i want to click on this banner so i can perform the click method if i want to perform uh, I, I want to click on this so i can click here this is the text box if i want to type something so obviously i can type here this is the drop down if i want to select something from this drop down also you know we have seen a certain methods certain tools libraries classes which will help us to handle these drop downs okay maybe links and the pop ups and mouse actions and each and everything we have discussed throughout the course now it is time to write your automation test case right so how we can write our automation test case so in a simple sense let me show you that how will you write your first test case using the automation okay now you should understand that what is mean by a test case okay it is a manual testing concepts but i am not going in a deep of the test cases so in a simple term what i'll say is test case will be written to verify something in a simple words okay test case will be written to verify some functionality on the web page so this web page is loaded with lots of functionalities okay lots of things are there let's say uh, if i click on this sign in securely button then it will you know land me uh, it will help me to land on the login but login page or the sign up sign in page over there okay so let's say uh, if i want i'm going to click on this try prime then it will land me on to purchase the prime membership okay so these are the different functionalities so let's say this is the text box okay and it is used to search something okay this is the text box and it is used to search something so if i type here something okay and it is populating certain results over here okay so this is auto auto populating focus okay uh, features so whatever the things are populating or automatically populating and uh, whatever keywords i am typing uh, the values related to those keywords are coming up in the drop down so this is the functionality of this text box or maybe search box okay now we can test it okay i will type something okay and i'll see that whatever the results are coming up populating up those are relevant or not okay so that can be a test case for us okay so we can write multiple test cases on this search box okay so let's say uh, this should be typeable first of all it should be enabled and we should able to type something over here so it should suggest us while typing okay it should suggest us that what you want okay so let's say i am typing art then it should suggest us something let's say i am typing like like this so it should suggest 
according to that so it should be auto complete kind of functionality okay so this is the auto complete functionality which they have written so we have to test whether it is auto completing or not how we we are going to test it okay uh through the automation so obviously we will type this arti over here and we will observe that what kind of results are populating so this is the simple thing that we need to perform over here okay so we are not going to write a test case for this okay we are going to take a very pink uh, very simple scenario where we will click on this and we will click on this sign in button and it should land on this amazon sign in page so we will check whether after clicking on this uh, what is that after clicking on uh, your orders okay after clicking on this your order okay is it landing us to the amazon sign in page or not this is the test case that we are going to write okay we are going to automate so let me write down first selenium test is the package we already have we will see so we'll write we'll create some class over here and that is first test case okay so we need to check whether the functionality is working correct obviously amazon's functionality is currently working okay so it will not give us any error so but how we can write the test case actual test case so for this i am using the web driver manager again dot chrome driver dot setup okay then web driver driver is equals to new firefox sorry not firefox but chrome chrome driver okay that's it easy now let us import this one import this one also done then open the url driver.get and here we are going to write the url amazon dot in okay that's it so this is the url that we want to open after opening up the url what we are going to do is we are going to click on this element over here so we will take a locator of this so you can use any locator css or xpath would be the better option okay so here we have href we have this class okay so let us try finding this with the class and let us see whether it is unique or not but there are six matches to it okay there are six matches to it so obviously it won't work so we have to find for the very unique element so let me go over here here oh so it is leading us somewhere else okay and now let us click on this one so it is a runtime assignment that i'm picking up people so okay so this is that span tag and its text is hello sign in okay and let us try clicking on this one so let us try writing the xpath for it span at the sorry contains is the function that we are going to use and text what is text is the thing that we are going to check with perfect so we are getting the unique element let's copy this locator and driver dot find element by dot xpath and here we are going to write the xpath and then we are going to fire the click method that's it so after clicking on that particular element we should land on this different page now what is the identity of this page we have to understand this so identity of this page is this login text okay then its title is amazon sign in okay and we can see one text box over here which is again auto populating and a one button one link one more button over here this is the label this is the link 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 and label so these are the identification factors of this page 
but we are going to use this title as an identification factor okay so we will check whether the title is having sign in text or not okay so how we are going to do that so we will apply a weight over here okay driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait and time we are going to wait is for maybe three seconds okay and time unit should be milliseconds over here okay not microseconds but milliseconds perfect so this is the weight that we have applied and after applying the weight what we are going to do is we are going to check the title get title and we will save this title inside one variable over here and we are going to assert it if okay if title dot title dot contains sorry contains now what we require is sign in okay i should be capital sign in if the title is having sign in then obviously uh, the things are coming out perfectly okay so let me see perfect then what we are going to say test case is passed okay else what we are going to say test case is failed so this is the simple test case that we have created over here okay and if i click right click on this and then execute this one okay so let us observe what happens so it is trying to launch the browser and it will put the url perfect now it will click on the sign in it did and it is landing on the new page and its title is sign in so let us see that what is the result can you see the result test case is passed so this is the test case that we have written okay a simple automation test case we have written this is a simple automation test case okay but in real time scenario you have to write multiple test cases okay multiple test cases you have to write and um in in terms of manual i am talking right now okay so inside one suit inside one suit test suit or maybe suite whatever you call it as inside one twist test suite okay we have multiple tests okay we have multiple tests and under one test we have multiple test cases okay under one test we have multiple test cases understand this so if i am calling some test as login test okay my test name is login test so what i am going to do is i am going to write as many possible test cases as on login page or login functionality so i will call all those test cases group as a login test getting it as a login test so the test cases related to login functionality will be written under login test so there may test cases name may be anything okay they may have a name according to their id or maybe something like that so name can be anything it, it varies project to project so here under one suit we have multiple tests okay under one test we have multiple test cases okay in terms of manual i'm talking and group of test is nothing but a suite test suite okay and all these suites togetherly form the entire project entire testing project okay 
so there can be multiple suites inside one testing project do you get this okay project and so on so how you are going to define your suite so it it totally depends on the perspective of the tester and the one who is designing the test okay so it totally depends on the person who is defi defining your test so uh the suit will have multiple test test will have multiple test cases and inside one project we will have multiple suites test suites okay this is the simple hierarchy of entire testing project okay now each and every manual tester is responsible to write these test cases in terms of XML, excel sheet okay or maybe there are certain tools like hpqc and so on so you have to write your manual test cases using those tools or maybe excel sheet so you have to doc document it properly that what kind of steps you are following let's say you want to open the browser so you will write your first step as open browser right in front of that column you are going to write that what kind of browser you are testing on okay so you should specify the browser name over there then if the second step is enter url okay then you have to document that step also enter url and what is the url that you have entered you have to mention over here then third is maybe next step whatever enter username enter password and click on login and so on and after that you will make one more column where you will observe the expected result okay expected result you will observe over here and actual result will be observed okay so you will match actual result and expected result so expected result is the expected behavior of the application let's say i'm typing username or password incorrect then in that case <clears throat> in that case user should not be able to log in okay this is the expectation so this this step will say that after entering wrong username and password user should not log in and error should be displayed this is the expected step and now the task of tester is to observe the actual results which are appearing so he will try to write the wrong username wrong password and he will observe that what is the actual result then actual and expected results will get matched okay and if they are matching then we will say that this test case is passed okay or maybe this step is passed so let's say first step is open browser where expected result is browser should open but actually if browser is crashing then we are we will say that browser is crashing on this system okay with configuration this and this so, so very simple terms in very simple terms we are going to explain this one okay so this is the manual test case you are writing and what is the task of automation tester is to convert the manual test cases into the automation test scripts okay what is the task of automation tester is to convert the manual test cases into automation test scripts very easy okay means uh, most of the companies ideal practice should be your automation tester will not write the test cases right from the first so he will just convert the manual test cases into the automation but in today's industry there are so many most of the companies are following this standard that um, automation tester have to write the manual test cases and then he have to convert your manual test cases again into the automation and so on or maybe directly you should write the automation test cases so they don't want to waste their time so again that's a part of life but see uh, what i want to say over here is we have suit okay we have one suit suite over here inside that suite we have multiple test inside one test we have multiple test cases okay this you can manage in terms of excel sheets okay in terms of manual testing you can manage because you know in which excel sheet you have written these test cases and so on okay so you will give uh, the name of that excel sheet with the name of suite name maybe or maybe with the name of test okay and then you can maintain one document where you will write all the details of the all the excel files that you have generated or maybe the sheets inside those excel files and so on so there are lots of stuffs to maintain okay first of all lots of stuffs to maintain what is the drawback of manual testing that is what we are talking 
So, so first drawback is to maintain lots of files. So you have to take care of lots of files, data written in those files. Okay. Second thing here, report should be generated manually in terms of manual testing, because whenever you will execute the test cases, you will observe the result and you will mark that this test case is passed, this case is fail, and you will observe the result column and based on that column's values, you are going to generate some graphical report, let's say pie chart, bar charts, or so on, and the status of each and every test case marked against that particular test case. So this is the manual reporting that you are generating for your entire uh, project. Okay, this is the second thing. Third thing is, let's say if you want to perform a data-driven testing, okay, where you want to provide multiple data, huge amount of data to one single test case. Now being a manual tester, what you're going to do, you're going to pick one pair of the data from your test data. So you may have a test data in terms of CSV file, in terms of PDF file, in terms of Excel file, or in terms of database. So source of test data can be anything. Okay. So you will pick the test data from the source. You will apply this, that test case, test data to your test case. You will observe the behavior of the test case for that particular test data. Then again, you will pick, pick the next pair. Then you will apply that data to the test case and you will try to execute that. Again, you are going to do the same stuff. So it is quite irritating to do certain kind of things repeatedly. First thing, so it is irritating. Second thing, it will take a lot of time to do it manually. Second thing, okay. So these are the two, two drawbacks. What is the first one? It will irritate you, obviously. You are a human, you are not a machine. And second thing, it will take a lot of time to provide data to your single test case. So that becomes really bad idea to go for the manual for the test cases which you are executing repeatedly. Understand this. So where automation is required and where manual is required, we should understand this clearly. Okay, because 100% automation is not possible again. 100% manual is also not possible in today's era. Okay, so where automation will come in picture. So let's say you have thousands of test cases for your entire project. Among those thousand test cases, you have 500 test cases to be executed each and every time. So whenever a new build is releasing, whenever there is a code change in your project, whenever there is new functionalities being added, or whenever the existing functionality is getting removed or maybe altered. So in all of those scenarios, you have to execute the test cases written for those functionalities or you have to check whether the newly added functionality is making any side effects or not. So in that case, you have to execute the test case is written for the existing functionalities also. And that is a and that is called as the regression testing in general words. Okay. Regression, retesting, smoke testing, sanity testing. So this kind of in this kind of testings, you will require the efforts of automation testing, where you are doing the same thing continue repeatedly. Okay. Where you are doing same thing repeatedly. When you when you are executing same test case repeatedly, at that point only you will need automation testing. Okay. But Let's say if you are writing one test case just to check certain functionality and you are not going to use that test case in coming future. So obviously you will not put your extra efforts writing a code for that test case. Okay, so that would be a manual test case. So it has nothing to do with the automation testing and automation tester should not convert that test case into the automation because see why we have created the mixer grinders. Why? Because uh, you know, each and every day our ancestors used to grind the spices in some particular bowl they had with some particular uh, uh, thing, you know, to break those grounds and spices and blend everything each and every day. So every day they were making the spice, uh, they were making some uh, gravies and they were making some dishes where they require the spices. So for that, they have to you know do the manual stuff a uh, lot of time. It 
it took a lot of time to blend the spices each and every day. So what we have done is we have invented the mixer grinder and mixer grinder will help us to grind the spices, blend the spices in a no time, in a very less time. So this is the day to day activity that we have automated. Okay. But we will not automate any activity, which is not daily. Let's say marriage is one activity okay, that we are going to do. So for marriage, we require maybe five kilos of masala or spices. Let's say five kilos, 10 kilos of spices we require in a uh, marriage. So are you going to grind the five kilo of spices every day? Obviously, you are not right. You are not going to do that. So for that, obviously, you are not going to put the automation efforts and you will not find any mixer grinder, which will help you to, you know, blend the five kilo of spices okay you are not going to invent a mixer which is that big enough okay for your household usage okay so simple in a simple way i'm trying to explain it this example may not fit okay but sorry for that okay but i, I just want to say that what can be automated and what cannot be automated this is the decision which automation tester have to take because you are the one who are going to put the efforts and you should perfectly know that your efforts are not getting wasted. Okay, simple words. So what are the drawbacks of manual testing? So it is irritating, first of all. Irritating, first. Okay. But if you are getting money, then it is very good. Okay. <laughs> In a simple terms. Oh, spell miss. Okay. Again, spell miss, I guess. Okay, irritating. And if you are getting money, obviously it is good. But in terms of effort, it is irritating. So you have to keep track, keep track of each and everything the test suite, the test, the test cases you are writing. You have to take care of a lot of files. Okay, report generation. Report generation is again manual where you have to put your manual efforts to report generate to generate some report. Okay, data driven testing is very <coughs> okay. Let me data driven testing. Okay, data driven testing is very hectic task to perform. Okay, and there are a lot of okay. So for this particular reasons. What we are going to do is we are going to use the automation. Okay, first thing. But what about keeping track of each and everything? Okay, what about keeping track of each and everything? Let's say that you are started converting your manual test cases into automation test cases. So one test case will be one Java method. Okay, what is one test case? One test case is nothing, one Java method. Here we have written the test case inside main method itself. But if we convert, if we change this, okay, public void tc underscore zero one, let's say test case zero one. This is the test method that we have created. So this is the first test case and it is nothing but a Java method. So one automation test case is equals to one Java method in simple terms, okay. Now we have, let's say 100 test cases over here. So what we are going to do is we are going to create 100 methods. Okay, fine. Then uh, we earlier have talked about that we have multiple test cases under one test. Okay, multiple test cases under test. So we can call this class as one test or maybe group of classes as one test. Okay, then we have a suite, test suite. Now test suite is collection of the test cases and we know that where are the test cases test cases are in the java methods so multiple java methods will be inside classes classes will be, will be inside some packages and we will group all of those packages to form the test suite or maybe one test okay and collection of those packages again will become a test suite okay now, how will you keep the track of your test cases again in terms of automation also? Because you don't know where is your test case residing in which class. Okay, you just can have the, you know, uh, uh, the tentative understanding of where your test case is, where is the test class and so on. 
but to organize this kind of mess to organize this kind of bulkiness you don't have anything right now okay till now till this point we don't have anything to manage all these methods to manage the reporting for these methods why because we will not understand which test case is passed and which test case is failed if we execute them in a bulk let's say i have 10 classes each class is having 100 100 test methods so it will become 1000 test cases at the turn okay and if we execute all of those 10 classes then all of the 1000 methods are going to execute obviously so how we are going to understand that this case case is fast and this test case is failed so obviously by observing this kind of statements okay by observing this kind of statement on the console obviously because println will print on the console getting it or maybe we can write this statement inside some particular file so you have to go in that file you have to read the entire file what it is saying and which test case is passing and failing and so on means you don't have any choice to manage the mess that you have created in your entire project okay your entire project is having thousands of test cases now you you need to know that which test cases passed and which test cases fail you cannot judge from here okay first thing second thing is if you want to generate a report again you have to see that particular file and you have to check which test cases failed and passed and according to that you should maintain some file this was the second drawback third thing is let's say after me after maybe 15 days you want to execute only 500 test cases out of your thousand test cases how you are going to do that and all those 500 test cases are scattered inside different different classes okay they are in different different classes so how you are going to call those different different test methods okay test methods now i'm calling them so how you are going to call those test cases because to call methods okay if they are instance we can call them using the instance of the class okay if they are static method then we are going to call them by direct directly using by the class name so are you going to create different different instances for different different classes first question okay if you create it will become a very bulky in in terms of execution if you are going to use the static method then it may be a possibility that in a multi threaded environment they get a messy result messy result why because multiple threads can access them in that case so it will become again a problematic situation to manage such kind of things so if i want to execute only 500 test cases it is again a mess okay so these are the different different problems that we may face even after automation okay what are the challenges report generation have to be taken care manually if you are doing the automation again okay report generation and management of test cases tests and suits okay management of entire test cases tests and suit will become very complicated okay choice of execution choice of execution will be a very very crucial task over here <coughs> choice of execution will not be there so if you want to do it you have to write some logic for it again so a lot of programming efforts are required to do this kind of things so to avoid mismanagement of test cases tests and suits there is one library called as test ng okay what is the name of library test ng is the name of library which they have provided who provided obviously test ng uh, itself so test ng have provided one library with the name with the same name and what they say you just write test cases we will manage all your test cases okay it will manage all test cases test tests okay test suites and etc okay now what test ng says is you have a problem with report generation don't worry i will generate a report automatically 
where it will say that which test case is passed, which case, which test case is failed. Okay. Now you want a choice of execution. Obviously, I will give you a choice of execution. Okay. Now you don't have to create multiple main methods in different different classes where your test methods are. What test ng says is, I have a main method in me. So don't write your own. Don't write your own. I will execute the test cases of your requirement. So there will be single point of execution you will get. So from this single point, you can control your entire project. So isn't it a very good idea to control your entire project and the test execution from a single point of execution? So you will get a very single point execution from where you can execute your test cases. Okay. So in a very simple terms, testing is trying to manage all the test cases, all the classes, all the suits, all the packages and etc. Again, it is going to generate a very good, neat and clean report. Okay. It will give you a choice of execution that which test cases you want to execute, which test cases you don't want to execute. That kind of choice will be given automatically and it will take care of those choices in the coming future. Okay. Let's say that you want to execute only failing test cases or only failed test cases. So you want to execute only those test cases which were failed previously. Okay, so that kind of choice is also given by the test engine where you can execute only failed test cases. So it will automatically identify which test cases are failed and it will automatically execute only those test cases. Okay, third thing what test engine can do is it can create dependencies, okay, dependencies between test methods okay it can create dependencies between test cases now what do you mean by dependency let's say that you want to check whether the uh, whether the product is being added in the cart or not okay so for that you have to log in first okay so you will execute the login test case and then you will execute the test case of checking the cart right Checking the card test case is now dependent upon login test case. Okay. Let's say if login is failed, can you check what are the items in the card? Obviously you cannot check. Why? Because you are not logged in. So for that, checking the card test case is dependent on the login test case. So this kind of dependency, if you want to create test engine can easily create that. Okay, test engine can easily create that kind of dependency. <clears throat> Let's say your test cases are in different, different, different classes. Let's say, okay, your test cases are in different, different classes and you forgot where you have written your test cases. Don't worry. Now, let's say you have one group that is called as regression and your manager is asking to execute only regression test cases. So just tell test engine that I want to execute regression test cases only so it will go and find the regression test cases and it will execute only those test cases okay so this is how test engine is smart enough okay now <clears throat> this is a little introduction about the test engine what test engine can do so test engine can come in a picture uh, right from the unit testing to the integration testing or maybe system testing Okay, so right from the unit testing means when when you are starting right started writing a single class from that point you can include the test ng in your project or maybe the integration point where you are going to collate all the classes and all the packages into into one another. So at that point also obviously you can use the test ng to manage the entire stuffs. Okay, so what is test ng? It is simple a jar file. Okay test ng most of people ask that what is the long form of this ng okay so it's it's long form is test next generation okay test next generation that is ng so it is simple library so it comes with a jar package and you have to download the jar file of it now what is there inside this test ng jar okay so mainly it have annotations 
okay mainly it have annotations so test in jar is based on the annotations and using those annotations we can configure the entire automation project okay now what is mean by annotations okay this is the basic questions so if we talk in term of java so in a simple way i would say that they are simple interfaces okay annotations are interfaces and annotations can be written on method level okay as well as on class level okay so annotations can be written on method level as well as on class level so what is the difference between the annotated method and the method without annotation okay so let's say i am giving some degree uh, some you know recognition to someone that he is sir okay sir is the recognition let's say so that is the recognition so method will be recognized by that annotation by the test engine so test engine will identify the methods according to the annotations given to them okay so it will ident let's say that um, in any country okay prime minister is having more privilege or maybe president is having more privilege whereas the common man are having least privileges okay so if you are going by road okay if you are going by road regular office routine and if let's say prime minister is coming through that road then obviously the signals are will get blocked for that particular amount of time okay unless and until the prime minister passes through that road okay not passes away okay passes through that road so you have to wait for that particular amount of time why because his recognition is as an prime minister okay prime minister is an annotation attached to that particular person that is why you have to wait for that particular person to pass through that way okay but your annotation is common man so you have to wait for that particular amount of time so this is your annotation you are a common man let's say if you are going to become a prime minister in coming future so that prime minister annotation will be given to you and according to that annotation entire crowd entire you know uh, people of your nation are going to recognize you as an prime minister so that is the annotation in simple words okay technically they are interfaces okay java interfaces and they are written after this at the rate symbol so every annotation will precede this annotation symbol so let's say sample annotation so you also can create your own annotations okay we are going to discuss them in coming future so this is how the annotation simple annotation looks so let's say prime minister this is an annotation that i have created and if i attach this annotation with particular method then that method will become a prime minister simple words okay so this is how test ng have different different annotations in it and if we apply the annotations as per our requirement to our test methods okay then our test methods will be recognized by the test ng according to those annotations okay now let us try to discuss what are the different annotations inside the test ng so first and very important annotation we have inside test ng is at the rate test okay so this is the annotation and what it says is a uh, method with this annotation annotation will be considered as test case okay method with this annotation will be considered as test case by whom by test ng so whatever method i have if i am writing at the rate test annotation to any method any java method then that method will automatically be considered as test case by the test ng and it will appear in the report which is generated by the test ng so test ng will automatically generate the report okay in a simple words at the rate test means method with this annotation will be considered as test case okay now we can write a notation at the class level okay so let me write a notations can be written at the class level as well as 
at the method level. Simple word. Okay, so where you can write the annotation? You can write the annotation on the class level or maybe at the method level. So at the rate test, this annotation is class level and method level. So you can attach this annotation to the class as well as to the method. If you attach at the rate test to single method, then only that method of that class will be considered as test case. Okay. Did you get this point? So let me uh, write something for you over here. Okay. So this is the first test method we have. And let's say if I'm writing at the rate test on top of it, so I have to import it. So here I am unable to import uh, that at the rate test. Okay. Why? Because we don't have configured our project with the test ng jar. So what we need to do is we need to download the test ng jar from where we can download. Obviously, we from the Maven repository. So go to Maven repository again. <clears throat> and here type test ng. So you will find this. Click on it you will find so many versions of the test engine over here but don't go for the version which has very least usage okay go with the version which has highest usage so 6.14 is the jar which is used by most of the people and let's click on this so it will download the test engine jar okay i already have downloaded it so I, what i'll do is i'll click on right click on the project go to properties Go to Java build path, add external jars. Okay, perfect. Inside this, we should have the test in JJR, but we don't have, let's find it in downloads. Okay, test. Uh, okay, this is the jar that we have. So simply click on it. So let me, okay, perfect. Done, our project is configured with the test ng jar. Now we can use all the annotations provided by the test ng. Now let's try to import this annotation. Click on this import annotation. Yes, done, the annotation is imported. If you control click on this annotation, command click in Mac, so you can see over here. Can you see how the annotations are defined? Okay, so they are simple interface kind of thing where you will find this at the rate symbol in their declaration. So this is nothing but the at the rate test. That's it. In simple uh, technical language. Okay, so we have imported this. Uh, at the rate test annotation and we have applied this annotation to this test case. Okay, so we don't have to write a main method over here. This is the biggest advantage uh, test ng is having. So it will create its own main method and will try to execute the entire uh, entire test. Okay, so let's say we are going to create one more method test method over here test case two zero two. Okay. And I'm not writing any logic inside this method, but I will simply write a system dot out dot println statement for the sake of understanding. This is TC02. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm not writing at the rate test annotation for this. Okay. Simple. We have two methods. One is having at the rate test annotation, and another is not having at the rate test annotation. Okay. Now, how to execute your test class? Okay, how to you execute your test cases? For that, you have two choice choices. First choice is from your class only. It's a, if you are in Eclipse, from your class, right click on your class, go to, but test ng plugin is not available. So we will download it. Okay, in the help on the marketplace okay eclipse marketplace and we will install the eclipse plugin this time so we have imported the jar but we don't have the test ng plugin that is why we are not able to see that option 
run as testng. Okay, that should be there. So we will check and go over here, testng. So again, it will ask us to, you know, um, relaunch the Eclipse after installing the plugin. So it is taking a lot of time. Yes, test ng for Eclipse installed. Okay, it is already installed. So let me stop this one, close this one and click on your project. So we have to convert our project to the test ng first. So after clicking, right clicking on this, you will find this option test ng over here. After clicking on this test ng, select this option convert to test ng. So your entire project will be converted to the test ng and while converting your project into the test ng, test ng will generate one file and its name is test ng dot XML. Okay, this file will be generated and this files contents will be this. So we will come to this contents later. We are not going to discuss them right now. But understand test ng is going to generate one test ng dot XML file. So we are going to have a very good discussion about this file in coming future. Okay. Just click on finish right now. That's it. We are good to go. So if you refresh this project, you will find that test ng dot XML file is generated over here. So let me see whether I can see. Yes, I can see the option now and click on run as test ng test. Okay, it is opening up the browser. It will try to enter the URL. That's it. This is the end of our test case. Okay, now observe the console over here. This is something different than the usual Java console. Why? Because we haven't seen something like this over here. We haven't seen something like this over here uh, before, but now we are seeing it. Why? Because this is configured by the test ng itself. So test ng is saying that passed. Which test case is passed? TC01. And what it is saying? It is a default test. Okay. Tests run. So how many tests run? One test run. Okay. How many failure? Zero failures. How many skips? Zero skips. So this is the result test ng is showing to us. Okay. But this is not a report. Okay. This is just a summary of entire test that it has executed. Now where we can see the report again, right click on your project, click on refresh. You will find one folder over here and its name is test output. If you collapse this folder inside this folder, we will file find one HTML document and that is emailable report. Okay. This is the HTML report, which is generated by the test ng automatically. So let us open this and let us try to understand this report. Okay, is it opened? Not, I guess. Yeah, perfect. So this is the file that we are going to open. Let's right click on this and open it with Chrome browser. Google Chrome. So this is the report generated by a test ng. A very neat, clean and a tabular format of report is generated where the test name is default test and inside this test we have this test case okay number passed one number skipped zero number of failed zero time taken in terms of milliseconds that is 27000 milliseconds included group excluded group we are not going to discuss right now okay in simple words so this is the simple, neat and clean report generated by the test ng. So are you guys able to understand that what is the advantages of test ng? But if you observe one thing over here, this method is not considered as a test case. 
it said that one test is executed only can you see over here test run only one okay why because it is considering to this method as a test case and it is considering this as a java normal java method so this will not be considered by the test ng for the execution okay so to execute or to call this method you have to create the object uh, explicitly okay but let's say if i write this at the red test annotation right from here to the class level okay now what will happen so whatever methods i have written inside this class will by default become test cases okay so let me write down if applied to class if at the red test is applied to class then all methods inside class will be treated as test cases that's it will be considered as test cases now let us execute this so i'm not writing this code over here for the sake of example i'm reviewing this one and i'll add a simple system dot 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 print ln statement this is tc underscore zero two perfect now execute this one yeah can you see over here now test run r2 failure r0 skips r0 okay past test case one past test case two and these are the messages that we have given that's it so if you are going to write this at the red test annotation on the class level then obviously it will consider all of the methods written inside that class as test cases and uh, the result will appear the result will appear in the emailable report that is generated by the test ng so let me show you that report okay so refresh this one and yeah can you see over here first test case tc1 tc2 this is the name of class okay this is the name of method tc1 tc2 both are passed first test case have taken 19 seconds and next next have taken 19 milliseconds and next time taken 4 milliseconds test number of pass 2 number of skip 0 failed 0 and that's it so as many test cases we are we are going to write as many results will appear inside this report those many results will appear inside this report so this is the test ng report and this is all about the test ng and its introduction so in coming lecture we will talk about the annotations different annotations of test ng in detail so whatever annotations we have inside test ng we are going to discuss them in detail so this is all for the day if you guys have any questions please ask the questions Okay, do you guys have any questions? Avinash, uh, Rajesh here. Yes, Rajesh. So basically, uh, we are uh, for the execution any test cases.